Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. We are here with another amazing recap for you to enjoy. Today we are gonna discuss the 2012 released movie Jack Reacher. Watch out spoilers ahead. In the beginning of the movie, in Pennsylvania a van is shown and the driver parks it in a parking. He hides behind a wall and takes aim with a sniper gun at several people and starts shooting. The man is actually a retired military man and the world's most unjust sniper. He was very crazy about shooting the people when he was on duty. But, after retirement he gets even crazier. He shots five people dead and escapes in his van. The police comes to the crime scene. Detective Emerson handles this case. They find bullet casings and other evidences there and through the fingerprints they quickly determine the culprit James Barr a former U.S. Army sniper. Police raids his house and arrests him finding him sleeping inside. Emerson also finds the van used by Barr there. Sniper riffle, bullets and a strange equipment he used to make the bullet. During the interrogation, Barr didn't say even a single word. Emerson puts all of his efforts but in vain. He just wrote, get Jack Reacher on a paper. They were confused about who Jack Reacher is and in why Barr wants him to investigate his case. They gather information about Jack Reacher. Alex Rodden also handles the case with Emerson. They reach on the result that Reacher is a veteran investigator and he is not active for two years. Just then Ridon's secretary arrives and says there's a person outside claiming his name to be Reacher wants to meet you. Reacher comes inside and introduces himself. He says a professional sniper would never leave such clues behind him. He claims that Barr is not the murderer actually. Emerson and Ridon did not agree with him. Reacher asks to meet Barr but, when he goes to him he finds him unconscious. He was brutally beaten by other prisoners when he was on the way to escort him. Reacher demands them the details of the investigation but Rodden refuses and instead asks why Barr wanted Reacher to investigate his case. They get to know that when Barr was in the military, Reacher investigated a murder and Barr trusted his investigation skills. That's why he did not speak any word and demanded to bring Reacher. He knew he'd been planted and only Reacher can solve his case. In a cafe, Helen who is from a firm and wants to give Barr a fair trial talks to Reacher. Helen is also the daughter of the investigator Ridon. She records his opinion by interviewing him. Reacher tells her that when Barr was in military, he killed four department employees which he admitted. He is not involved in these murders. If he will be found involved in this matter, I will kill him myself. Then, Helen starts visiting the victims' houses. At first she goes to the house of a nanny killed in this case. But, after meeting her father, Helen feels unsafe when she interacts with him and watches a gun with him. She immediately escapes from there. On the other hand, Jack starts collecting the evidences by investigating different places. Jack goes to a bar and a girl naming Sandy approaches him and tries to seduce him but he refuses saying that he cannot afford her. Just then her brothers come there and argue with Jack. The oldest one asks him to leave or they will beat him. Leaving from there Sandy still talks to Jack saying that she does not mind bleeding. Outside the bar, Jack gets involved in a fight with them. In the meantime, police arrives there and arrests Jack. In the police station, Emerson and Helen come to visit Jack. He tells Helen about Sandy and the whole incident. He tells her that he is being chased and it was a full planning to kill him. He seeks Helen's help in finding the information about everything. Helen after gathering the information about the victims meets Jack and informs him that the first victim was a full-time nanny. The second one was a single mother parent of a son. The third was a happily living wife and mother who was out to surprisingly buy a watch for her husband concealed the spending records. The fourth was a vice president of a construction company. After her husband's death, she was forced by the rival company to sell her company but she didn't want this. They QAced her a huge damage and to be financially stable again to fight her case she was out for a loan from the bank. The fifth victim was a brooker who went out that morning fighting his wife. But, on the time of his murder, he was carrying a bouquet which showed he was going to solve the matters between him and his wife in a beautiful manner. It seems to be a random shooting as no one of the deceased was connected to the other. But Jack doesn't think like this. He feels something very suspicious as why a housewife would have to hide her spendings when she is buying something for her husband. Why the brooker bought the flowers in the afternoon and why the woman even after seeing the man shot down didn't run away terrified. They both get very confused. Just then Jack sees an Audi down outside his flight and immediately recognizes it as the same car following him for days. He asks Helen to collect complete information about Barr and also about the car. After gathering Barr's information they get to know about the shooting range where Barr visits every Saturday to practice marksmanship. They find out about the car that it belongs to WT Construction Company which wanted to buy the company of the murdered CEO of the construction company. Here Jack gets everything clear that the real target was the lady CEO and others were just killed to cover up the situation. He rushes to the shooting range to find how does it all connect to Barr, and in the hope that maybe he can get some more information related to Barr. But, he also wants to know why he was being chased and tried to be killed. For this purpose they have already gathered information about Sandy and before shooting range he goes to Sandy. 
When he meets her, she gets afraid of him and tells him that she was being paid $100 for that night. She tells him everything what she knew and asks not to pull her name in the whole situation. Reacher assures her safety and suggests her to leave the town. But before she could leave the town, the real murderer, Charlie gets to her. He introduces himself as Jeb's friend to her. When Sandy does not show any interest, Charlie gives his companion signal and he punches her on the head. Charlie suffocates her which immediately kills her. When Reacher gets there, there was police on the crime scene. Emerson watches him and suspects him when he turns his car back after seeing him. Emerson starts chasing him with police mobiles. After a thrilling chase, Jack manages to escape there. He reaches the shooting club and meets with the owner Martin Cash. Jack asks him about Barr but he completely denies to know him. Cash being scared of getting involved in the case does not tell anything to him. Jack insists him on which he puts a condition asking Jake to put three shots in the target center. If he does so they can discuss. Jack agrees and move to the range. He shoots and luckily he passes Cash's criteria. Cash tells him how Barr is his best client as he can shoot too much accurately. He also shows him Barr's papers. Jack tells him that Barr could not shot such accurately when he was in the military. He demands Cash to show him his camera recordings. When he watches the video recordings, he sees a suspicious man with Barr. He asks Cash about that man and gets to know that he is Charlie and he became friends with Barr and spent much time with Barr. Even Barr told him all of his old stories including when he killed the men during his duty. Jack immediately gets that it was Charlie not Barr who shot the targets and let Barr get the credit according to the plan to make him suspect. It was all planned to take Barr in hands and winning his trust. Jack takes the target papers as the evidence for the fingerprints of the culprit. He calls Helen and tells her about the whole situation. After that Helen gets on an elevator and gets abducted by Emerson and some other people with him. Emerson allegedly was also involved in the whole planning. After some time, Jack calls Helen but Charlie answers him. He warns Jack to get to the place he is telling about within an hour to save Helen if he can. Reacher tells him that he has evidences against him which can clearly determine him the killer. It scares Charlie and he calls for Zek. Zek was the boss in the whole planning who actually ordered to kill the CEO of the construction company to get her company. They all wait for Jack to come in order to kill him. But, Jack gets the assistance of Cash. He could help him in shooting but he can not see clearly because of his age but can give him a cover. Jack gets in a car and drives it backwards putting its seat down and watching through the rear camera. They start shooting at him but could only damage the car. Eventually they destroy the rear camera and Jack could not see anything and gets his car on the rocks. He manages to get out of the car. Cash just then start firing randomly and blindly. It distracts the men there. And Jack gets the chance to attack them. He attacks one of the men and snatches his gun by punching him. He rushes forward taking that gun. Cash drives his truck which make a noise and distracts other soldiers there on the guard duty. Just then Jack appears. Firing at them he knocks down the soldiers there. Zek then sends Charlie to kill him. Just when he goes outside the house to find Jake, he himself gets caught by Jack easily when Jack sneaks behind him and puts his gun on his neck. But, Jack does not kill him with gun and fights physically with him. They both involve in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. After managing with him, Jack goes inside the house where Helen was kept. But, Emerson comes in front of him putting gun on her in one hand and the other in the other hand pointing towards the door. He shoots two fires on the door. Jack tells him that he suspected him from the beginning. Jack comes in front of him swiftly also knocks him down immediately just in one shot. Zek was the only one left there. Jack and Helen go to him and Helen inquires him about who he is and why did he do everything. He answers nothing but Reacher points the gun on him. Then Zek tells them his name and everything. Then he asks Helen to call the police to hand Zek over to the police. He wishes Zek a best of luck for his life in the jail. But, Zek tells him that every time he goes to jail it won't be a prison for him. In fact he'll drag Jack Reacher in the prison. Let's see who's going to the prison. Jack thinks for a while and shoots him saying trust me neither of us is going to the prison. Helen gets shocked seeing this. They both leave from there. Helen visits Barr in the hospital. Due to severe head injury he has lost his short-term memory. He thinks himself in the hospital as a result of some old events. Helen tries to memorize him about the recent events by showing him some photos. Barr gets to know about how Reacher fought for him to give him justice. He remembers his pledge to get him. Helen leaves by asking him to take care of himself. In the last scene, Reacher is sitting in a bus and hears a man shouting at a girl. Reacher could not bear it for long and heads towards them. The movie comes to an end with it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get more such entertaining recaps. Also let me know in the comment section if you want me to recap any other movie of your choice. Thanks for watching. See you until next time.